82% for an A star, 69% for an A. How can you get the top grades? Now, I thought the same, but please don't get scared by looking at the high grade boundaries. It might not be as bad as it looks. I found chemistry the easiest to get A star in out of all of my subjects. And in this video, I will exactly go through how to get the top grades in A level chemistry. So let's begin. Now, although the grade boundaries for A-level chemistry are quite high, especially comparing it to A-level biology, what you need to realise is the exam itself, the exam questions are fairly easy and they repeat all the time. Uh, it might be with different names, different compounds, different wording, but they keep repeating. Okay, so I might have made chemistry look a little easier than it is. Now, there are so many definitions, so many processes and so many mechanisms that you have to learn. And to be fair, that is probably the hardest part of A-level chemistry. But once you have learnt all that and you understand it well, then the application in the exam questions tend to be much, much easier. For A-level chemistry, it is crucial that you know the whole content because the exam paper somehow manages to find a way to ask you something on basically everything. Now saying that, there, there are some things that you should know really, really well because they will contain a lot of marks. For example, mechanisms and their conditions. These will come up every single year and will contain a lot of marks. So what I would recommend is get an A3 piece of paper and draw out basically every single mechanism and write down the conditions and the products and you can see how the mechanisms are linked together uh, and you'll be able to see how to get from A to B, which can be really useful. Also, learn the definitions really well. There are quite a few definitions, but you have to know them as they are quite regular in exams and it's very easy to get those marks if you know them. Write down all the definitions somewhere and keep practicing writing it until you can get it perfect word to word. It is important that you're not missing out on any words because that could cost you a mark. Compound and tested reactions are also fairly regular. It wouldn't surprise me to see a six marker on it. Make sure you are aware of all the compound and tested reactions and when to apply them. And also learn the equations uh, as you will also need them. Now you will have to get the maths questions correct even if maths is your weakness. At least 20% of the marks will be from maths. And to get the maths questions correct, you have to know the formulas. But the formulas will never be the problem because as you do many, many exam questions, you will just pick up the formulas naturally. Also, be on the lookout for units. Different questions will use different units. Different formulas have different units. For example, a concentration in the ideal gas equation is measured in meters cubed, whereas uh, in the moles equals concentration times volume equation, uh, it's measured in uh, decimeters cubed. Uh, so for different formulas, there are different units and they will uh, change units on purpose. So always look out for that because if you don't pick that out, then you will end up getting the wrong answer. The best way of improving is just by doing questions, by practicing, do as many questions as possible. Most of the exam questions in your actual exam will already have been in past papers and other tests that you've already done, uh, just with different names and different numbers, different compounds, but the process is the same. You also need to know the practicals really well. They can ask you about the methods, they can ask you to uh, draw a diagram, or they can just simply ask you why that method has been used. Physics and Maths Tutor has basically everything for practicals. You could use their notes to understand, and then they have so many exam questions which are very useful, and I would highly recommend that you do them. I will link them in the description below. Leading on from that, there are plenty of resources that you can use for A-level chemistry. There are a couple of YouTubers, um, Elliot Rintol and Ellery Chemistry, but the videos can be a little bit long, but that's usually the best resource if you don't understand something at all. Uh, if you understand it and just need a quick review, then chem ChemRewise notes can be really useful. And these are condensed and contains basically all the content you need. For exam questions, Physics and Math Tutor has enough questions and you shouldn't really need anything else. Once you're comfortable with the content, then just move on to exam questions uh, and just simply keep doing exam questions. You should be able to get majority of the marks. If you didn't get a mark, then make sure that you understand it and maybe even make a note of it because in chemistry, the questions repeat and this might be the question that you will end up getting in your actual A-level exam. 
All right, so now on to notes. So I mainly made my notes online because it was easy to organize. If you're struggling to make your notes, I have a whole video on it. Now, different people have different ways of revising and that may work perfectly fine for them. But what I would like to point is that make sure you aren't just simply reading out your notes. Uh, some people just buy revision cards or they make their own and they're just simply reading out from their notes. For chemistry, have the question in front of you. Do the question without looking at the mark scheme by actually writing down the question instead of just saying it uh, and then check it and mark it using the mark scheme uh, and then see how you have done. Now, this is so important because it's so easy to miss out on things, words, uh, which could lose you marks and you might just be doing something incorrect. For example, with mechanisms, it's important that you're actually drawing out the mechanisms. If you're not drawing out, then you may never realize your mistake. For example, for the electrophilic addition, I was drawing out the arrow from the electrophile to the double bond when it was the other way around. And I would have never realized if I didn't actually check it uh, by drawing it out. Now I say that for every single subject, but please spare 15 to 20 minutes uh, in preparation for the lesson beforehand uh, because when you will walk into the lesson nothing will be new to you you'll just be able to retain more information and you'll just feel more engaged overall and that could be really really helpful and finally prepare for your topic test like your actual exams and take the feedback on board because you never know the questions that you got on your topic test may actually end up coming in your actual exams and topic tests give you a really good indication of the level you're working at. I hope this video has been useful. Thanks for watching and good luck.